My name is Sally. Turning 30 this year, I work in a marketing company. My husband Keith is also my colleague. We got chose during the training program and got married two years ago. We like to do things at our own pace, so we respect each other's privacy and keep a good distance between us. We share the chores and finances completely. Keith has been living alone since he started working. I'm grateful that he can do more housework than I, who lived at home. There was nothing to complain about him, and we had a harmonious marriage, except for one thing. Keith, Sally, welcome. Make yourself home. Thank you, Lisa. One weekend, we visited Keith's parents, who lived about one hour's drive. His mother, Lisa, always welcomed us cheerfully with a lot of home cooking. The menu that day, including shiitake mushrooms stuffed with meat, grilled king trumpet mushrooms with cheese, salted oyster mushrooms, and so on. Amazingly, all mushrooms today. I got some delicious ones at the farmers market, so I was excited. Lisa said happily to bewildered Keith, and I forced a smile. I had told her that I didn't like mushrooms. In other words. These dishes were her harassment toward me. It started on the first visit after our marriage. Lisa asked me over the phone if I had anything I couldn't or didn't like to eat. Without any doubt, I answered that I didn't like scallops. I had no idea that she, who never ceased to smile and seemed to be good-natured, was planning to bully me. But she surprised me with scallop gratin and salted scallops. She even prepared scallop pasta for lunch the next day. He knew I disliked it and mentioned it to her. Mom, Sally doesn't like scallops. Oh no! I'm sorry. I didn't know that. She played dumb. I was annoyed, but decided that she must have forgotten, and I let it go. Right before the next visit, she called and asked me again if there was any food I don't like. I answered childishly that I did not like the bitter taste of green bell peppers and Brussels sprouts. Well, I was served a lot of blows during my stay. Then it hit me that she was intentionally doing it. She didn't like me. It hurt more than it angered me. Keith sensed it too when she served things I disliked with pinpoint accuracy twice in a row. He didn't say anything at the time. But he apologized to me in the car on the way home. He looked twice as small and said, "Did I do something to make her hate me?" "No, you didn't do anything wrong." "I'm not sure. I've been taking her word and haven't been helping her with the cooking at all. Maybe I should offer to cook." "No, I don't think so." "Me either." He was very clear about this, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. That was because I wasn't so good at cooking. Keith even declared that he was going to be in charge of it at home. There was another problem. Lisa's cooking was amazing. The first time she served me scallop gratin, I thought it would be rude not to take a bite. I gathered up my courage and put it in my mouth. To my surprise, it was delicious. It tasted nothing as I'd ever had before. I disliked the smell of the sea, but there was no trace of it, and the texture and aroma of the scallops and the smoothness of the cream with the melted cheese were a perfect match. The green bell peppers and Brussels sprouts were also exquisite, and the mild bitterness beautifully accentuated the dish. I complimented the food and gobbled them down. Lisa's dumbfounded expression left such an impression on me. It was also the reason Keith couldn't get mad at her because I ate everything she served. I enjoyed the food that was supposed to be unsavory to me. It was my third visit. I devoured the mushroom dishes with gusto. Thanks to Lisa's harassment, my dislikes were decreasing. Since I was introduced to her cooking. I realized that the reason I've been picky was that I grew up in a family that didn't care much about the food. Oh, I had no idea mushrooms would taste that good. I've been missing out on so much in my life. 
I rubbed my stomach in satisfaction next to Keith, who slapped his forehead. What would be Mom's true intention if you enjoyed her roastment? She's a good cook, so maybe she has some pride. Hmm, I don't get it. Frankly, I'm more concerned about your dad and brother's attitude than your mother's harassment. I guess you're right. The son lived with their husband David, who retired a few years ago, and another son Kyle, who was single. Her direct harassment was the least of my worries, but I was more annoyed with Kyle, who watched me with a smirk. Perhaps he knew that she was entertaining me with something I disliked. When I ate the food with relish, she looked puzzled, but he showed obvious dissatisfaction. He even watched my every move with unpleasant attention, and if I made the slightest mistake, he would make sexist remarks. On the other hand, David thought I was a servant, a housekeeper, or something, and ordered me around with a snap of his fingers. Keith shielded me. But I still felt degraded. You know, we shouldn't visit them anymore. I was taking advantage of your generosity, but there's something wrong with my family. He murmured after the visit. I guess you're right. No matter how good the food was, it didn't change the fact that Lisa was harassing me. I was also fed up with the male chauvinism of David and Kyle. However. If I just pretended that it had never happened, I would be left annoyed. I had an idea of how to get back to them. Okay, can we have the vinyl visit on New Year's Day? Here's something I would love to do to them. When I shared my idea with him, he seemed a little reluctant, but he agreed to go along with it. Lisa disliked me for some reason, and only put things on the table I didn't like. Maybe it was going to be the last time we saw each other. I hoped she would take my paycheck to her heart. Then came the final visit, probably the last New Year's Day to be celebrated at my in-laws' house. On the dining table, there was a sumptuous dinner made by Lisa with a plate of A4 grade wagyu steaks. It was a divine sight that I had never seen at my parents' house. Normally, I would be very excited, but Keith and I were anxious. I had told Lisa in advance that I wasn't a big fan of high-grade beef and preferred pork loin. She was soothing my reaction with a smile on her face, and Kyle was smirking as usual. David was indifferent and demanded why from Lisa. These were the usual behaviors of in-laws. It was a very awkward scene. I ate the salad first quietly, then I started on the steak. Then carefully prepared ingredients and tender meat were just heavenly. Oh, your cooking's just perfect, Lisa. A compliment came from the bottom of my heart. Oh, thank you. Lisa had a confused look on her face. Almost speaking over her, Kyle opened his mouth with a nasty smile. By the way, why are we having such an extravagant dinner? Is there something special to celebrate with expensive beef? Well, Lisa mumbled. Ugh, what a rotten character he was! Today is a very special day, right, Lisa? Huh? I put a box I had secretly brought in front of her. I opened it and showed her what was inside. It was a whole cake. Keith and I put party poppers we had hidden. Happy birthday, Lisa! Oh my God! The dry sound of explosions was followed by confetti and gunpowder. Lisa's eyes were so big in confusion, and David and Kyle were stunned. With a big smile on my face, I explained to them, "Your birthday is January first, isn't it?" Keith told me. You like steak, but David and Kyle usually get the most, and only give you leftovers. Well, she gave Keith and me a stunned look. He looked back at her and said, "You always entertain us on New Year's Day, and we never celebrated your birthday since I was a child. You never said anything about it either. 
I had totally forgotten about your birthday for so long. I'm sorry. Being married to Sally has made me realize a lot of things. Keith, she seemed to be tearing up at his heartfelt apology. In the midst of all this, Kyle clicked his tongue in his annoyance. What's this? You're scoring points, aren't you? That's what I don't like, women. You're all calculating. He shook his head in disgust, and I glared at him with all my might. I'm glad to be a calculating woman. I'm much better than a 34-year-old and a 65-year-old man who do nothing and pass her all year round. What the? He was so stunned to be talked back to by me that he lost his words. His face was bright red with his mouth open. Even David, who was staring blankly at the whole cake, was furious at my rebellious attitude. Keith, shut your wife up. You haven't trained her well enough. She doesn't know her position in this house. Keith yelled back to him. You shut your mouth. You, who do you think you are? Ignoring her brow, I spoke to Lisa. How does it feel to be congratulated by someone you were harassing? Excuse me. Her face quickly turned pale, as if I were telling a child. I spoke to her softly and without hesitation. Did you enjoy doing it? Well, listen. Are you happy taking care of a son who thinks that celebrating his mother's birthday is nothing more than scoring points? Are you willing to spend the rest of your life taking care of these men? Don't you envy that I'm loved and treated well by Keith? Um, she was at a loss for words. I didn't know how she felt while harassing me. However, even if she didn't say it out loud. Her kind nature was showing in her cooking. I would feel sorry if they tasted too bitter for her. Maybe she can eat a little of these mushrooms if they have the right texture. I'd feel bad if she couldn't eat anything. Let's prepare fried chicken too. I could sense her kindness in her food. He that told me that his late grandmother lived there until a few years ago and that she had assumed control over the family. Lisette had been bullied by her and given the lowest rank. She spoiled only Kyle, the eldest son, and Keith was left out. Even after her passing, the treatment of Lisa within the family did not change. When Keith became acquainted with my family, he realized for the first time that something was wrong with his family. The root of all evil in his family was David and Kyle. And Lisa was their victim. Even though I knew this, I couldn't easily forgive her for her bad behavior toward me. Still, her cooking was filled with genuine kindness and was amazing. So I wanted to give her a last chance. Keith and I will never come to this house again. What? What are you saying? I was talking to Lisa, but David and Kyle jumped in. Who do you think you are? You don't have the right to decide. That's right. A stupid, emotional woman has no right to speak. Shut up! When the normally calm Keith yelled like an erupting volcano, Kyle flinched. Using him as a shield, I suggested to Lisa, "If you want to see Keith and me, and your future grandchild, please think about what you should do. Please." Think about what you want to do with these selfish men, for yourself. For myself, she mumbled and looked to heaven. Don't take this black-hearted woman's word. Her goal is to break us apart. Kyle yelled at her, but she kept silent with her eyes fixed on the birthday cake. For the first time in decades, it was prepared for her. Keith and Lai left the house at that point. As we were getting into the car, David followed and cursed us, but we ignored him and drove away. There was nothing more I could do. It was up to Lisa. Three months later, Lisa left her house and came to mine. She apologized to me on her knees at the doorstep. 
I rushed to stop her, but she repeatedly apologized with tears running down her cheeks. She was brainwashed by her late mother-in-law that a wife was supposed to serve her family, and that women were lower than men. Even after her passing, Lesat had been living under the spell for a long time. When she saw Keith and I happily sharing housework, she looked at us with amazement and jealousy. It was Kyle who took advantage of her feelings and told her to discipline me by bullying. There was a row of a mother-in-law. After being bullied herself, she believed that it was a normal thing for a mother-in-law to do. She was well brought up and was not used to being nasty to people. Though serving what I disliked was the best she could do. However, I praised her cooking and happily gobbled everything. She felt miserable being mean to such a good daughter-in-law, but she still couldn't stop herself. After our last visit, she felt emotionally drained and shut herself up in her room, except for doing the bare minimum of housework. Kyle and David complained about her lazy cooking and apparently had a great time bitching about Keith and me. As she watched her disgraceful family and thought back on my last words to her, the spell gradually melted away. She did not want to waste the rest of her life for those who didn't treat her as a human being. I could feel her suffocating pain. I almost blurted out that she should have lived with us, but Keith gently stopped me. Instead, we found her an apartment a 15 minutes walk from our house. By the way, when she announced that she was leaving, David pleaded and yelled in panic. Kyle, on the other hand, coldly stated, "An old woman who has never worked can't survive on her own. There is no way that she and Sally would get along." David was dragged in by his arrogant attitude and kicked her out of the house in the end. It was true that probably no company would hire an almost sixty-year-old with no experience. What I didn't know was that she had some unearned income from an apartment and a parking lot business that she inherited from her late father. As soon as she lived humbly, she had no worries about her finances. Of course, she had lived for her family all her life. Gambling or squandering money had never been in her mind. It was rather more concerning for Kyle. Who had never paid a cent for his living expenses at home, and David, who had retired and had to live on his savings and pensions, they relied on her for both chores and finances, and never imagined what would happen when she was gone. At first, they lived a comfortable life by eating out, buying prepared meals, and using housekeeping services, but such a life could not last. Three months later, David got a call from the bank that his account was overdrawn, and finally realized there was no balance left. Moreover, due to the poor diet, Kyle had gained a lot of weight, and David was suffering from health issues due to excessive consumption of salt and alcohol. He used to be proud of his good health, so it was such a shock for him. They must have finally realized that it was old Lisa who kept a peaceful family life. Five months after Lisa moved out, they grew impatient with her not showing any signs of coming home, and ordered her to return. However, once she had awakened from her brainwashing and realized the comfort of living alone, she had no intention of going back to her old life. Instead, Keith visited them with a lawyer. And divorce proceedings were initiated. They resisted all around, but they didn't have the money to hire a lawyer. It took a long time, but Lisa was eventually set free. In need of a new housekeeper, Kyle desperately searched for a wife, but no right-minded woman would come near that filthy house. The two, unable to lower the standard of living, kept aiding their debts and garbage. They eventually went bankrupt, and the house was sold after a while as a vacant lot. They lived in a small apartment while working day jobs. 
they were still thinking that if Lisa saw their devastation, she would feel responsible and apologize to them. They showed no love or appreciation to her, but only expected to receive her unconditional love. What fools they are! On New Year's Day, four years later. Happy birthday, Nana! Thank you. Lisa smiles happily as she receives a crayon sketch drawn by her soon-to-be three-year-old grandson. Here, Mom, it's a nice piece of meat. Eat it while it's still hot. Oh, how wonderful! She watches Keith, who is in charge of the grill, with twinkles in her eyes. Now she and I have come to know each other so well that we even go on day trips together. Keith is learning to cook from her on his days off and steadily acquiring her skills. My son has been receiving all of her love and affection. I'm very satisfied to enjoy her delicious meals while seeing her peaceful face. Mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, man and woman, it doesn't matter who does the cooking. The heart appreciates and enjoys the food prepared with love. A dining table shared with those hearts at the center of the home is the happiest thing in the world.